Rogue Queen by L. Sprague de Camp. All right, this is the 14th book that I've read in a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. I'll leave a link down in the description of the announcement video. And this is a bit of a milestone because this is book 14 of 140 books that I'm reading, so I'm 10% of the way through. I, I've read one other novel from L. Sprague de Camp before, and that's Less Darkness Falls. That's also on the list, so I will be reading that and doing a, re a review in the future. I've also read a few of his short stories and believe a few of his Conan books because he's, he's kind of famous for taking over some of the Conan stories. This book was only 150 pages long and it was published in 1951. It's in a universe that he has written many other stories in called Viagens Interplanetarius. And th I believe there's a series that that you can read in order. And then this is just kind of in that universe, but I don't believe it's it's tied very closely to the the series of books he wrote. Now, what this let's go ahead and get into the plot. This book, it takes place on an alien world, and the inhabitants of this alien world are structured kind of like bees. And we have a queen, we have workers, we have drones. Most of the reproductions taking place via the queen. They kind of call themselves a colony. There's nearby colonies that they're friendly with. There's nearby colonies that they're at war with. And they're kind of in like a Bronze Age. So they have some knives and they ride around on beasts. And that's about the limit of their technology. Now, right in the beginning of this short novel, we have some humans that land on the planet. And they arrive in their ship. They have technology. They don't try to hide that. But... They're not supposed to give any of the inhabitants uh, like a jump start on their technology. They're not really supposed to interfere too much with the goings on of all the different inhabitants of this alien world. But as we get into the novel, we're going to follow. It's, it's all kind of from the point of view of these aliens. We do get pretty closely tied with some of the humans and some other things that happen. But really what happens is, I don't want to spoil it, but a lot, of, a lot of things with the structure and the way these aliens operate will end up getting kind of flipped upside down and turned around and all of that. And one of the main themes of this book is gender. And this book, from what I, I did just a little bit of looking up on the internet after I finished this book and it didn't really seem like the the gender issues were you know that um, different but apparently for a book written in 1951 it was pretty groundbreaking the way L. Sprague de Camp handled the genders and it's it's a lot more modern than what people were doing back then. So from what I can tell, he this book kind of helped pave the way for, uh, you know, gender equality and all these other things that we're used to reading about in books these days. So trying to keep this short, let's just get into the pros and cons. The, the world building in this book was really good, uh, but I will give you a hint. There's names, there's language that... L. Sprague de Camp made up for this book, and it was confusing, but in the back of the book, I didn't see this until I finished the book, but there is like a glossary of names and words, and so my advice would be to consult the back of the book. Don't read the last page or anything. I wish it would have been in the front of the book. It would have made my reading experience probably a little easier. But for a very short book, he came up with a lot of culture and words and names for this alien race. And I think he did a really good job at that. 
the gender issues that he addressed, apparently, I didn't think it was that amazing, but that goes to show in this day and age, he, I mean, he was 80 years ahead because it, it read like a modern book when it come, when it came to that. I think the way he had the point of view from the aliens and looking at humans and what they were bringing was, was done really well. So I, I really enjoyed that. And now let's get into some of the cons. So this book read like an adventure book with science fiction and aliens and this like first contact trope. And I, it did remind me of some of these older like Edgar Rice Burroughs and Conan books and just the way the characters are interacting with each other. There's a lot of bickering and sometimes it can be funny. Sometimes it can be a little annoying. I found it probably about split about how much I enjoyed it compared to getting annoyed by it. Some of it was pretty funny, but but there is that. There's also the ending I thought was okay. I wouldn't really say it was mind-blowing. I'm not going to give anything away, but it it was just kind of it kind of just ended flat for me. I'm not going to I'm not going to really probably remember this book too much in the future. There's a couple aspects, the way their hive or bee kind of hierarchy works that I'll maybe think about for a while. But other than that, I don't think there's that much um, that I'm going to really take away from this. So who would I recommend this book to? I think anyone who wants a taste of that older style adventure book kind of in the lines of Edgar Rice Burroughs or some of the, the the Conan books. It does really read like this adventure book because you're going to spend a lot of time running around the planet trying to do things and interacting with other people and animals and that kind of stuff. And it did it in a pretty good way. Like I said, the bickering kind of got a little old at times, but other than that, I think it was it was done really well, and I think if you're into science fiction and you want a quick, easy adventure read, then this would be right up your alley. So that's about it for this book. I am going to give this a three. I think it was just pretty much, you know, average all the way around. I after finishing it and realizing he was a little bit ahead of his time when it came to some of the gender issues. That could have bumped it up a little bit, but still, I, th I think it was just an average read. I have nothing that's going to blow me away or I'm probably going to remember in the future too much. But now what I'm going to go on to next, I'm going to read Dr. Mirabilis by James Blish. Or I'm going to give this a shot. From what I can tell, this can be a little bit of a challenging read. It's more historical fiction. And I do, if I don't like it, I will probably DNF this. Um, just to get on to the other books in this loosely based um, four book series called After Such Knowledge because I'm really excited to read Black Easter and then The Day After Judgment and then the final book in the loosely based series is A Case of Conscience and this book is on the list of masterpieces of science, fic science fiction so that's kind of why I'm reading this series to get on to that. So look for that one coming up in the, in the near future, unless I DNF it. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.